me your bike right now. R slash Entitled Parents. What is up guys, Mr. Reddit here, back with another episode of Entitled Parents Stories. R slash Entitled Parents is one of my favorite subreddits, and I really enjoyed making this. Now kick back, relax, and enjoy the show. Our first story we'll be reading today. Entitled Karen and her little jerk try to steal my 1,000 euro bike. Entitled Mom ends up in jail. After that, Entitled Dad tries to cut through line, has to pay thousands. And after that, Entitled Kid steals my tablet with help from Entitled Dad and security. And then we'll be finishing up with My Kids Can Come Into Your House Whenever They Want. Welcome to our newest subscribers, Lauren, Menand, and Jessica. And if you're new, subscribe now for new stories from Reddit every single day. Entitled Karen and her little jerk try to steal my 1,000 euro bike. Entitled Mom ends up in jail. This is my first time posting on this subreddit, and trust me, this stuff gets crazy. This happened about a month and a half ago, plus my bike is pretty much new and I take care of it more than myself. Take note, English is not my primary language, plus I am on a mobile, so I'm sorry if the formatting is messed up. Cast, we've got the Entitled Mom, Entitled Kid, Me, Bystander, and police officer. So, for a little backstory, the bike is brand new, and I spent 1,000 euros on it, which means I don't let anybody even touch it, and also, I don't want anything destroyed because I don't have money to fix it. So, let's get on with the story. About a month ago, I was cruising around town with my new bike, listening to music, when I stopped for a cigarette. As I sit on a bench, I see a little kid, about 9 years old, running towards me. Whoa, you finally stopped. <laughs> Why were you running after me? I wanted to take a look at your bike. It looks sick. It is brand new. Look all you want, buddy. Can I ride it? No, I bought it just a few hours ago, so I won't let anybody use it. Plus, you won't be able to, as you're just a little kid, and the bike is too big for you to be able to ride it. Please? No, I'm sorry, buddy. Entitled Kid storms off. After two minutes, when I take a cigarette out, before I even light it, I see a woman with the I want to speak to the manager haircut with that little jerk stain in tears next to her. My little angel told me that you were rude to him. No, he asked to ride my bike and I said no, as it is brand new and I don't want anything on it to get destroyed. Why are you lying, young man? I am clearly not lying. Why would I be rude to a little kid that did nothing to me? I am done with you, young man. Entitled kid in tears. Mommy, I want that bike. You will have it, my love. Don't worry. No, he won't. I paid for it, and it is mine. Entitled kid starts screaming. Mommy, I want it. <coughs> Give me your bike right now. No, no, and again, no. Then I try to get on my bike to leave, and then I hear a weird sound, and suddenly I'm on the ground, as is my bike. I get up, and I see Entitled Mom fuming. Then I look at my bike to make sure everything is okay. I see my back wheel is bent a bit. That's when I got furious. What the heck did you just do to my bike, you Entitled Woman? Then a bystander is coming over to see what is happening and asks Entitled Mom. Are you guys okay? Entitled Mom, with nothing to say, plays the victim card. This young man stole my angel's bike. She is lying. She came over trying to take it from me. Entitled Mom slaps me. I finally had enough. I'm calling the freaking police on you. Fine. Call them. I call the cops. Explain to them what happened, and after five minutes, a police car arrives with two officers, and the one gets out of it. The second one stayed inside. What happened here? This lady! Entitled Mom cuts me off, screaming. This young man tried to steal my little angel's bicycle. She is lying. The bike is mine, and she tried to make me give it to her. Stop lying, young man. You took it from me. Don't shout, you guys. Shut up, you dumb person. <coughs> Slaps him, too. Ma'am, what are you doing? 
Nobody disrespects me. I just want my bike right now. You're gonna have to prove it. Do you have the receipt on you? Luckily, I had the bike's receipt in my bag, having bought it with my mother just some hours ago. I was scrambling through some papers when I finally found it. I got the receipt, officer. It had my mom's name. Whose name is this? My mom's, officer. I have to call her to confirm the details on the receipt. Of course. I give the police officer my mom's number. He calls her and she confirms the details that are on the receipt. Entitled mom couldn't be more red from the embarrassment then. See, officer, the bicycle is mine. Ma'am, the evidence says otherwise. Entitled mom grabs Entitled Kid from the hand and starts running, and the police officer is chasing them until Entitled Kid trips and falls. Police officer arrests and handcuffs the Entitled Mom. Then, the police officer asked me what happened from start to finish, and after that he asked me if I wanted to press charges, to which I gladly replied with a yes. Entitled Mom was charged with assault, destruction of someone else's property, trying to claim someone else's property, and resisting arrest. Bystander also pressed charges. Court was about 11 days ago, and she was sentenced to four years in jail and also had to pay for my back wheel. If you came this far, thank you so much. Have a great day. Edit. She got four years as she had a bad criminal record and was already on probation. Next up we've got Entitled Dad Tries to Cut Through Line Has to Pay Thousands. Hello everyone. As with most posts, here are the obligatory warnings. First time poster, English is not my native language. You can point out mistakes or mildly roast me though. I'm always happy to improve. Long text, too long didn't read at the bottom, not on mobile, so feel free to point out formatting mistakes. Short background. This happened like three years ago, so I don't remember every detail to 100% and this whole story won't have much actual conversation in it. It just sums everything up. It happened on a train ride from my hometown, where my family lives, to the city of my own place, where I work, halfway across the country, roughly 350 kilometers, 220 miles, on a Sunday evening since I was visiting my family over the weekend. And since it had a rather bad connection, I had to switch trains three times for every travel and each travel took about five hours in total. My foot was injured, important later. I don't know why anymore though. And I was in training at work, therefore I didn't earn that much, also important later. Now to the details. It was starting to get winter, and as you would expect, the national train company was taken by it by surprise, as always. So many trains were late or completely cancelled. I started my travel at 6pm to theoretically arrive at roughly 11pm at my desired arrival station. Then winter struck and my first train got 10 minutes late on a 15-minute ride. This caused me to rush to the next train in pain because of my foot. As luck will have it, the connecting train either already left or never even came, so I had to wait an hour for the next one. This one also arrived at the next stop with a delay of 45 minutes, so I arrived there at about 9.45 p.m. The last train to my destination was leaving at roughly 8.30 p.m. for that day, there was another at 10.30 p.m., but I only would have arrived the next morning at roughly 6 a.m. Since this was a very big train station in a big city, and the fact that the train company was forced to give me compensation for their failure to transport me, I stayed there instead of ending up in some small village station where I wouldn't be guaranteed to get a hotel or even get away from the train station, since I didn't have much money on me to pay a taxi and the fact that those small stations usually don't have any ATMs. So I headed to the information counter where the story unfolded. Cast, we've got me, entitled Dad, train station assistant, and many more which won't get abbreviations. Let's go. So I come up to the desk and tell the lady my story and my demands per their company's policy, the law, them paying the night in my contracted hotel near the train station and changing my ticket from tied to certain trains to open so that I could get to my destination without having to purchase a new ticket. Pretty standard. While I was speaking with the train assistant, Entitled Dad and his two kids came up behind me. The kids didn't do anything though. And even though there are clear signs and posters all around the info desks that tell people to exercise discretion and wait behind an indicated line, Entitled Dad comes up crouching right beside me. It annoyed me, 
but I figured that I had a bad matchup against him with my foot if I confronted him. But then he started to slowly scurry towards me and slowly push me out of his way with his body weight and small steps. At that point, I had enough and pushed him away and the following discussion ensued. Dude, what is wrong with you? Can't you read? The sign clearly states that you should stay back there and pushing me away while I'm still talking is a jerk move. Shut up! I have two small kids and you were taking way too long anyway. They are tired and we need to get a hotel room soon. You're young. You can walk to another hotel. No, you shut up. I have exactly the same right to that hotel room as you and I was here first. So get back in line and learn to behave like a normal adult. Sir, please step behind the line and stop bothering the passenger. We weren't finished yet. Shut up. I said we need a room fast. To me. And now, get out of the way. Get out of here, jerk. He kicks my leg away, causing me to fall hard on the granite floor with my elbow and now completely twisting my injured foot. Security! Please be reminded that one security guy, another train assistant, and two other passengers were standing right next to us on the second counter during the whole situation and they saw everything. Face palm. Well, the security guy grabs and fixes Entitled Dad on the ground. Entitled Dad's kids are crying and scared, as to be expected. The two train assistants tried to console them and called police and the other passengers helped me, as I was in severe pain and called an ambulance. The police took statements and identification from everyone and let everyone go, since they had no reason to arrest him immediately. Then the whole after story hit him full force. I had to stay the night and next full day and night in hospital for checks and was then let go on crutches. My ankle was sprained, but my elbow was fine. I only hit the funny bone. Since I still couldn't walk good enough, I was in too much pain to take the train. I had to call a taxi to drive me the 200 kilometers, 125 miles to my own place. In hindsight, it would have been better to get back to my family. But, well, you're always smarter afterwards. My parents quickly send me money for it via PayPal after they heard the story and my plans. So I didn't have to go to work for a month since that job required me to stand and walk all day and had time to get a lawyer. My parents lent me the money for it since I could have never afforded the lawyer and sue the guy in civil court. I didn't try criminal court since it wouldn't have brought any personal gain for me. In the end, the judge granted me a damage pay of roughly 400 euros for the pain and another half of my monthly pay for financial loss and because the guy behaved like a jerk in court, insulting me and the judge, lying, screaming, etc. And of course, Entitled Dad had to pay his and my lawyer costs and the court costs, as it is standard. The thing is, I didn't even have a high financial loss since my employer still had to pay my salary while I couldn't work. I just had to order much food for the next weeks, since I couldn't go grocery shopping that well. Entitled Dad felt like this was unfair and appealed. Well, let's just say the next judge upped the damage pay by roughly 100 euros, because Entitled Dad still behaved like a jerk. He didn't try a next round. So to sum it up, he most likely lost four lawsuits, two against me, one against my health insurance, one against my employer, had to pay damage pay, 500 euros, roughly half my salary for financial loss, another 500 euros, my taxi bill for the ride home, special long distance, so more expensive, the driver's ride back into the original city, his operation zone, was 850 euros, my lawyer costs, 3,000 euros, court costs, also easily a few hundred euros, his own lawyer, most likely not cheaper than mine, Probably all my hospital bills, the crutches, painkillers, etc. My actual salary and all the lawyer and court costs for those lawsuits. I said probably for the medical and salary payments because I don't know if they sued or if everything was paid by his insurances, which is highly likely, and that his premium just got higher. So yeah, I alone got roughly 5,000 euros from him, plus all the rest that he and his insurance had to pay. You made it through this novel. Congratulations and sincere apologies from me for this long wall of text. Next we've got Entitled Kid Steals My Tablet with Help from Entitled Dad and Security. So, this just happened a couple weeks back, but I've been waiting to see how it ended before sharing. My old Kindle, rest in peace, had just died, so I was borrowing my wife's tablet to get my reading fix. 
I was just chilling out in the cafeteria with a coffee after working a short notice call in multi-car accident for four hours. Because I was shopping when I got the call, I wasn't in uniform. So it's just me in an old t-shirt and jeans trying to grab a minute to myself before my shift proper kicked off. I was pretty into my ebook when I felt a tug on my elbow. I turned around to find a little Indian, Southeast Indian, not Native American, kid looking at the tablet. He's maybe five to six years old and asks if I have any games on my iPad. It's not an iPad. It's an old Samsung thing. I tell him, no, this is a boring old person tablet. It only has books. While we have our little conversation, I'm looking around for any evidence of parents. Hospitals are big places and kids get lost a lot. He seems disappointed in the game's situation and wanders off and I think nothing of it. A bit later, the five-minute warning goes off on my phone to let me know I need to get back upstairs to the lab. I dash off to the coffee machine for that last one refill and foolishly leave the tablet sitting on my jacket on the table. When I come back, the tablet is gone. I do that thing everyone does where I pat all my pockets and look on the floor, but the tablet is really gone. I grab my jacket up and head to the counter to see if they saw anything, but on the way, I see the kid from earlier leaving with his mother and he's got my tablet. I know it's my wife's because the cover is very distinctive with cartoon characters on it, so I know it's hers. I catch up with them and politely ask if I can have the tablet back. The mother kind of smiles at me, but we have a bit of a language barrier. I do the world's worst performance art miming that the tablet is mine. She talks to the kid who is starting to whine and clutches the tablet to his chest. At this point, I'm thinking this is going to be fine. The mother knows what's up. I'm going to get my stuff and all is going to be well. Enter Entitled Dad. I didn't see him coming. He must have still been at the counter or in one of the booths. The kid had gone from whining to angry crying pretty quick and suddenly, five foot four inches of Entitled Dad is there jabbing a finger at me and yelling in broken English. What are you doing? What are you doing? I tell the guy that his kid has my tablet in between his outbursts. I just want it back. He doesn't even look at the kid. He's just yelling. My son is not a thief. You leave. My son is not a thief. You leave. I tell him that I'm happy to leave. Just give me back my property and I'm gone. I don't raise my voice. My hands are at my sides and I'm trying to keep things nice. But this guy is getting revved up. He keeps repeating the line about not being a thief and sprinkling in that I'm discriminating every once in a while. Somebody must have called security, because a security guard walks into the cafeteria and makes a beeline for us. Now it's worth mentioning that the guard and Entitled Dad are the same race. Entitled Dad starts speaking rapid-fire Hindi to the guard. He stops every once in a while, and Entitled Mom nods along with whatever he's saying. I can't understand anything they're saying, so I just stand there waiting for my turn to speak. I mean, security is here. So how much longer can this go on? So you can imagine my shock when the security guard asks me to step aside, not so we can talk. No, so that entitled dad and family can leave. What? Apparently, I was harassing the mother and child, and entitled dad had stepped in, and now I was refusing to let them leave. I tell the security guard as patiently as I can that I was not harassing anybody. I just want my tablet back so I can get back to work. The security guy looks at the kid holding the cartoon character covered tablet and starts talking to Entitled Mom and Entitled Dad again in Hindi. Then he tells me again to move aside so they can leave or else he will be forced to contact the police and restrain me. I'm not sure if it was the security guy's stupidity or Entitled Dad's smug face, but something did snap in my brain and I went a bit Karen on the guy. I tell the security guy that I'm happy to comply but I'm calling his boss and he is going to be liable for my property being stolen. The entitled family shuffle out the exit and I start to dial. The security guy was probably thinking he was about to put me in my place because when you dial security, they patch you through to the officer closest to the location, which was him. He already had his phone out, ready to give me the I am the manager talk. I bypassed the switchboard completely and phoned his boss directly. Working after hours has its perks. The security supervisor is a guy I'm going to call Dave. Dave is an ex-cop. Dave runs a tight ship, and Dave does not tolerate stupidity lightly. 
I say hi to Dave and get to see the security guy's eyes boggle a little bit. I ask Dave if he's aware that his officers are allowing thieves to leave the hospital while the people they've robbed are detained in the cafeteria. I give him the full rundown on the last 10 minutes, with the guard's name sprinkled in there fairly liberally, along with a description of the entitled family. The security guy is losing the color from his face. Dave doesn't waste any time. He has the details confirmed by the guy in the camera room and radios the other guards to stop them at the exit. I hang up with Dave, look at the security guy, and ask him if he feels like getting me my dang tablet back now. He's off like a shot. I call my manager and let them know this mess I'm dealing with. He laughs and tells me to take my time, but keep him updated. Security wind up returning the family to the cafeteria about five minutes later minus my tablet. I ask them what happened to it, and the newly arrived security guys tell me that when they confronted Entitled Dad, he took the tablet from Entitled Kid and threw it on the ground. Dave has the contents in a plastic bag. The thing is mangled, screen smashed, cases warped, just a total write-off. Dave had wisely chosen to call the police at that point. Entitled Dad had been fairly uncooperative until the word police was spoken. He was still saying that there was no proof the iPod, it was not an iPod, dude, was mine. The guard had brought him back to point out the dozen or so cameras in the cafeteria. He was looking decidedly less smug by the time the cops got there, looked at the remains of the tablet, looked at the footage, and issued Entitled Dad with a fine and a charge for theft and destruction of property. What could have been a quick, teachable moment for a kid turned into almost three hours of talking to the cops and getting my case number before I could finally go back to work. Dave filled out an incident report for me, so I still got paid. Dave, you are the MVP. The Aftermath A couple days later, I got a call from a lawyer who worked for the family that Entitled Dad was visiting. He arranged for my iPad, seriously, why does everyone think it's an iPad, to be replaced by sending me a check. It was enough for wifey to buy a top-of-the-line replacement and all the peripheral stuff that she wanted, so she's happy. I was asked if I would consider writing a letter about the charges against Entitled Dad being a cultural misunderstanding because it could affect future visa applications. I politely declined, as I think being a jerk transcends in culture, so he can live with his actions. He might even learn something from the experience. The idiot guard wrote a very sincere apology letter and delivered it in person. We shook hands, and I considered it resolved. Dave put him on probation, and I figure that this is a learning experience for him. Maybe next time, he'll hear both sides of the story, and then check the cameras. I got myself another Kindle. I'm hoping that the fact it just does books and doesn't look like an iPad will keep the entitled kids and entitled dads away. Just a quick edit. The guard did apologize for his part in this little fiasco. The entitled dad got in first with his story, which was that the big scary bearded guy was harassing his wife. I don't know the specifics of what I supposedly said or did. The wife backed up the story, throw in the crying kid, and he thought he was doing the right thing. He admitted it was stupid to not check my story or corroborate anything with the cafeteria staff or to check the cameras. I figure we all make mistakes. I've made plenty myself. He has to redo some training and will be on probation for six months. If he learns from this and doesn't repeat it, I'm happy enough with that. And our final story of the day. My kids can come into your house whenever they want. My husband and I bought our house back in the 70s. To call it a fixer-upper would be kind. It had been on the market for over a year and we were the first to even look at it closer than driving by. But by the end of a year of living here, we had done a lot of work and the place was starting to look great. Even the neighbors commended on how great the house and yard looked. Yay! New siding and grass seed does wonders. One summer day, I was hanging my laundry out when I noticed my neighbor's granddaughter and grandson run across my yard and into my house. I had never had those kids in my house before, so I was shocked as to why they would just do that. I quickly went in after them. The little boy, I think, was about four, just a little guy following his sister around. The sister looked to be around six, maybe seven, and she told me that she had permission to be in my house. I asked her who gave her permission, and she said that her mom told her she could. I got the kids to follow me, and I took them to their grandparents' house. Their grandmother and mother were on the porch, so I told the women what had happened. 
the kid's mother confirmed that she had indeed given both children permission to explore my house. I stuttered a moment while asking, Why? She said, You bought that house out from under me. We are the ones that should be living there. These kids are sad they don't get to live across the street from their grandparents, and since they should have been living there, I told them they could go in. I looked at the kids. They were pushing and poking each other and giggling. They didn't really seem all that upset to me. I said, That house was on the market for 14 months, and I've lived here longer than a year. Why are you unhappy about this now? At this, the woman's mother, who was my neighbor, chimed in. She was getting ready to ask about that house when you bought it. It wasn't at all fair of you. You stepped in, and now my daughter and grandkids can't live near me. They have more of a right than you to be there. I seriously didn't know what to say. I know for a fact that no one else had looked into the purchase of this house until my husband and I bought it. I looked at both women standing in front of me, frowning with their arms crossed, looking defiant, and decided that I really didn't want to engage this kind of goofiness. I asked the mother to please keep her kids out of my house and I left. I walked home to the sound of them loudly yapping their displeasure behind me. This was one of the most unreasonable situations I had ever been in, and I have been in a few. These women made our lives miserable for a while. Every week we had city inspectors dropping in because of anonymous complaints of unauthorized construction. We were building on a couple of rooms, but we had permits for everything. We began keeping the permits in a folder by the door because we had to show them all the time. I think nowadays you have to display it on a wall where everyone can see. Two different times, police pounded on our door late at night because one of our neighbors heard screaming and had called them. There was no screaming. We had been asleep both times. I had to carry my keys on me at all times when I went outside because if I left the doors unlocked, those two kids would be right in there. They managed to come in several more times that summer and it was difficult getting them out. It was turning into a nightmare. Just as I was looking into my legal options for getting them to stop, the older couple, the grandparents of the kids who kept coming into my house, moved to a farm they had inherited. They sold their house, and our next new neighbors were great people. In fact, they are still there. The hassles had only lasted a few months, but man, it was intense for a while. Then I found out that they had known they were going to move all along. Those two had been bored one day and just decided to hassle me because I was new and they had already hassled everyone else in the neighborhood. The sale of the house was the only thing they could come up with to have against me. I also found out that our entire neighborhood was glad to see them go. Now before I get reprimanded for not calling the police, believe me when I say that back then you did not want police involved. The police we had in the city during this time were all in a state of perpetual anger and they would make up a reason to arrest you if you even looked at them wrong. I freaked out in a major way when they showed up in the night. Also, if I had called the police on the trespassing kids, the harassment I was experiencing would have been stepped up. And yeah, I am a ginormous wimp. Those two gals had been known to physically attack people, and they were lots bigger than me. There have been hassles with neighbors since then, but none of them as awful as this was. Like my husband says, Just be glad they didn't give their house to the mean daughter with the trespassing kids. I think I would have moved if that had happened. Give Mr. Reddit a thumbs up on this video, or I'm giving my children permission to come into your house and take your stuff. That's all for now, but don't be blue. I'll be back soon with more stories for you. Remember to listen to Mr. Reddit every night, so your dreams will be wonderful like you are and bright.